coming today. I'm here to discuss Caitlin's case study with you. Um, she is a 12-year-old. She's at the middle school. She is in seventh grade. She's a very athletic student. She's in hockey, tennis. She's in very many other activities outside of school, like church and 4-H. She is eager to please and a hard worker. She was brought to me um, to get some extra help because her parents were worried about her interest in reading and there were some discrepancies in her testing score. Um, her parents feel that if she doesn't develop an interest in reading, that she will not have the skills and strategies needed to read more complex texts that she'll encounter in high school and in college. They noticed on her math test scores in the fall of 2011, she had 38% on the reading, but then it did go up in the spring of 2012, she had 79% in reading. They were puzzled by these scores and wanted to know a little bit more about what was going on. Um, Caitlin views reading as only um, something that you do to do well on school testing, like the math test, or to complete a project. She has very little of interest in reading outside of school. Um, I did some uh, assessments, the Dewberry Reading Attitude Survey and the questionnaire from Juneau School District Language Arts Portfolio, and they verified her lack of enthusiasm for reading. Her reading for fun was at 38%. Her reading when required was 36%. And so that verified that she does have very little interest in reading outside on her own. Her parents said in order to get her to read, they need to bribe her or um, really persuade her to read, but it's been very difficult. When I did my Miss Q analysis of her um, reading, she showed that she was a confident reader. She was fluent, but she sped up quite a bit, that she was not stopping to read the punctuation. And she would read and read and read at a very fast rate. And she tends to become an overpredictive reader for this reason, because she didn't think about who and what she was reading about. She made um, assumptions based on her background knowledge, which put her in the category of an overpredictive reader and had more of the characteristics that an overpredictive reader would have. She needs to um, slow down a bit and make some connections. She's not connecting with what she's reading. She's not finding it meaningful. Um, her writing sample about her um, hockey team's experience last year was a very authentic writing sample. She did a great job with this. She had a hard time getting started, but once we compiled a list of things to write about, she was able to come up with a sequential paper. Again, um, she did a great job with spelling, but her punctuation was missing from her, her story as well. She did not have the same confidence in writing that she did have in reading. She really struggled to get going. She didn't feel like her story was good, she didn't really want to share. She was a bit reluctant. Um, she did not have transition words were missing. Also, there were um, commas, and she didn't know when to start um, a new paragraph. The paragraph beginnings, the introduction and conclusion weren't very strong either. So those are a few areas she could work on. But all in all, her um, story was good. She just lacked those cohesive pieces that should be kind of apparent in a seventh grade student's writing at this age knowing when to put in a period and when to use some transition words. Um, when I put her on the developmental continuum, she is in the consolidation phase, moving towards the silent phase. She needs to work more on that personalization piece. What does reading and writing mean to me? Um, I found that the continuum was very helpful and it helped her parents also see where she was and where she needs to go and what skills will help her get there. Some strengths. Uh, she has great attitude, she is a hard worker, and she's willing to work hard to get good grades. She's very motivated by that. Um, she does read steadily and at or above grade level. She has a high lexile range. She is a confident reader, and she can retell story elements with sequential and with detail. And you see those evidence in her writing too, except the lack of punctuation and mechanics in those transition words. Um, growth areas. She needs to make um, personal connection to um, what she's reading and with her writing, too. It needs to be more authentic. She said she has not had a chance to really do some authentic writing, and that has deterred her from continuing to write, which may be the problem with the lack of development of those mechanics. Um, she needs to have a passion for reading, discover reading results in real-world action. She needs to read with punctuation and pause at punctuation. She needs to develop a better understanding of advanced level of print conventions such as commas, colons, semicolons, periods. Um, she needs to discuss universal themes and become, find some more time for independent reading and writing. Um, some of the interventions I tried, 
were um, finding books that she can relate to and finds interesting. We did take a trip to the library and she was able to locate books in the library and find books that were a good fit for her and that interest her, interested her. She um, investigated topics of interest on the internet and discovered a plan for family's holiday trip and itinerary. She did this. She planned a trip for um, her family to go to St. Martin and the activities she would like to do there. And she was able to see that, hey, reading and writing can be purposeful. And she really enjoyed using the computer. Um, she needs to a little more exploration on explanation of punctuation and the uses and rules. Finney Ward suggests going on the internet and finding um, practices that, that can help students with using um, punctuation and mechanics, and then also to using mentor text and showing in the students' um, books that they're reading how the author is using punctuation too can make it a little more meaningful for them. Um, analyze books as a message. She needs to be able to see, hey, these books have a message. What universal themes do they have? And connect them with her world. Also, she needs um, to develop some ways to um, help her along with her writing if she should get stuck. Fears suggest that using prompts when a student gets stuck to writing can also be helpful too. And so we made a journal that helped her um, put those prompts in the front and the back. So if she gets stuck when she's writing, she can kind of look at those prompts and maybe that will give her an idea of what to write and to make some connections to the text she's reading. Um, I kind of discussed how she did on all those. I think if she continues working on some of the things we practice and the interventions, she will see some growth in the areas that she needs to. In talking with the parents, I gave them some specific five things they could do at home. They could journal twice a week with her and um, encourage her to pick a topic she wants to write about. Um, ask questions throughout the book. When she's reading a book, the parents should try to engage with her. Hey, tell me a little bit about your book. Can you tell me if there's any, any ways you connect with the character? Do you see a universal theme? Does this make you think of anything in your life? Visit the library to get books that interest her and set a weekly reading goal. She seems very motivated by setting goals and visiting the library might inspire her to find more and more books that she likes and finds interesting. Um, use the computer to find more real world information in reading and writing about that. And I thought making a family album and writing about what they did on their trip to St. Martin might be a great way to show Ken, Caitlin authentic writing. Uh, now what I learned as a coach and an assessor, I learned that you need to really look at the whole child. Reading and writing really um, kind of linked together and if you are willing to look at a student's reading and writing, you can kind of see where those um, structure and strategy is starting to fall apart or where they need to go next by looking at both and placing them on the continuum is very helpful in that aspect. It also gives you wonderful interventions to try that are authentic and meaningful. Um, and the more authentic and meaningful you make the interventions, the more invested the child is and the greater growth hopefully you will see. I learned also too when I do a miscue analysis, I need to really be careful on my questioning and not to um, end it too quickly. And that I need to have more leading questions that don't give away too much too much information. So more probing questions I need to be better at. Um, and just be very mindful too of the family situation to not put into play things that they can't succeed at doing at home. Thank you.